make you think how you can tell your story because photos are that story. So we just can't just rely on selfies. Hello and welcome to episode five of Learn English with Amy, the podcast for intermediate and advanced English learners that helps you listen and learn more. My guest this week is Patricia Pulido, a professional photographer and entrepreneur currently living in Mexico City. My guest was born and raised in Colombia, but she's perfectly fluent in English. She's even okay with being called Patricia Polito, American style, <laughs> much to the dismay of her family. In addition to Spanish and English, she also speaks Portuguese, having lived here in Brasilia for several years. Patricia specializes in documentary style family photography. And being trilingual and international, she works with clients around the globe. And she's just launched her very own online photography course. It's a step-by-step -step guide for organizing your family photos and videos in a way that is both practical and meaningful. The course is called Your Family Stories, Your Photo Legacy. I will link to it in the episode notes so you can learn more. So the theme of our conversation today features two related ideas. The first is memory keeping. That is the act of preserving or keeping memories. The people who take on this work for their family being what my guest calls the memory keepers. The second is the idea of leaving a legacy. In simple terms, a legacy is a gift passed from one generation to the next. Patricia will talk about how the memories and stories we preserve are the legacy, or gifts, we give to our families, gifts that can be enjoyed now and forever. Okay, let's get started. Here's me talking to Patricia. So I am Patricia Pulido, in English, Patricia Pulido, in Spanish. <laughs> I've lived many years in the States, so it's very normal for me to say Patricia Pulido, <laughs> which my, my, my family, they, when they listen to that, it's, it's funny, but it's, of, of course, it's not easier. And where did, where did you grow up? So I'm Colombian. I grew up in Bogota all my life until I was 25. Then I've been around the world. Uh, where did you live when you were in the United States? So I started in New York City for eight years. Then I moved to Washington, D.C., then to Managua, Nicaragua, then Brasilia, and now I'm in Mexico City. I moved here a year ago. And you and I met in Brasilia, didn't we? Exactly. Our, both of our families were eating at a pizza place, a very well-known pizza place in Lago Sul, weren't we? Exactly, yeah, I recall now. The pizza place was the meeting place. We, 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 we miss that a lot. <laughs> Patricia, tell me, how did you learn English? Well, I went to a, a British school in Colombia. So I got English since I was like five, but my parents, they were very, very keen that we learn fluent English. So they sent us often to summer camps in the US. No way. So I flew by myself when I was seven. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they sent me away on an airplane by myself and my sister. So I was seven and she was 11. And we used to go to summer camps in Leighton Mountains near Virginia. So we used to go there. I think that helped a lot to be fluent went in English. Um, I went from seven till I was like 15 or 16. That's amazing. Yeah, so I re I'm very, very thankful for my parents to do that because, of course, it was something very different at that time. I mean, nobody was sent to summer camps. <laughs> I was the only foreigner in the U.S. What was that experience like? Because you were also uh, with suddenly with kids from all over the U.S., but mainly the South, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. From all over the U.S. It was very unique because, of course, at that time, I guess in Virginia, you wouldn't meet a lot of international people. So they were asking me a lot of questions like, how come? How come? How's Colombia? Do you have trees? Do you have cats? <laughs> <laughs> I guess the 90s. There were not a lot of internet or, <laughs> um, but it was fun. I mean, I, have, I still have really close friends that we meet on, like I get to see them on Facebook. And just, those are very, very fond memories that I have my summer camp days. My parents, they always thought they wanted to, uh, to experience other cultures. My, my parents, they don't speak English. So for them, I mean, they tried. It was very frustrating for them. So I think that's, that's why they made us like, no, they have to really, really speak English. And they made it a, priori a priority, really intensify English for us uh, by sending us to summer camps, by the English schools. Besides English and, of course, your native Spanish, you also are fluent in Portuguese, aren't you? Yes, I am. 
<laughs> well, I guess I still call it Portoño, but <laughs> I, I can say I speak it. Out of curiosity, had you studied it before you moved to Brazil? Yes. And I, it was the worst. I actually, it was funny because my husband's uh, job, he gets to choose like what countries. And I said to him, I do not want to move to Brazil because my mommy brain can handle a third language. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I do not want to speak Portuguese. I don't want to learn Portuguese. No, I don't want to do it. And then I tried, I started learning. And it was like, because they say it's similar to Spanish, but it's not. So you get frustrated very easily. Yeah. <laughs> and then I made a point by I started before moving, but then when I got there, I made a point. No, if I'm gonna move to a country, I have to learn the language because I don't. I, I really don't like to depend on people. So that's how I started. Like I really want to learn. I wanted to work. I'm a photographer, so I wanted to work with uh, local people too. I think having local friends is important. So that's why I got to to learn. Did you study at the university here? I studied um, private lessons and in like a small group. And then I went to college there. I started doing photography at ESB and I talked to the dean and I said like, well, let me get back here in six months when my Portuguese is better. And he said, no, you're starting next month. You just have to go. <laughs> so I was studying, but I was going to study photography in Portuguese. So that felt very, very challenging. And I ended up doing that. And it was a bit frustrating for me because I'm very chatty. I'm very opinionated. I like to talk. So, and I couldn't turn my first <laughs> my hand. <laughs> but I think that was a very good experience. That's how I got my Brazilian friends. That's how I emerged in the <laughs> language by listening to photography in Portuguese all day. You, um, as we say, jumped in at the deep end, right? You went right into the course and that forced you to, to learn all that and to engage with people. And, and like you said, that was your way to make local friends. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, I, at the beginning I didn't want it, but that's how it went and that's how I kept and it worked out. <laughs> and so when you moved here, the kids were pretty young and, and then you, so you had, you had already worked in photography, I think, right? I was starting to do photography. I started photography 2014 and I moved to Brazil 2015. So I was, I was pretty new, country, a new language, a new profession that I, I decided to move to. So it was very challenging, but I, I think it paid off. <laughs> So when so you were working as a photographer here and doing a lot of family events, everything family family related. Tell me about your your latest project. So then on like I said before, on 2014 I started photography and then I realized um, uh, my style is very documentary. So I don't do post like go there, pretty scene, or let's go to a park. I do documentary style storytelling session. So what I do is that I go to homes, uh, document their routines, make sure that mom is in the picture, the memory keeper yeah. is outside, it's in pictures. So I document the real life. So what's happening, uh, your routines. If you want to go to the pizza place, I'll go with you. So I'll make sure that those memories are preserved. And then in 2017, I realized, okay, the photographer can be following us all year, right? <laughs> so we need to preserve our memories, the ones that we capture with our own camera, intimate moments. So then I decided to become a, a photo organizer and I started making sure memories were preserved of like getting those photos out of your phone. Photos are meant to be printed. So that's why when I started helping families to create those photo books to convert the clips into home movies. Preserve, make sure those pictures, those videos are not lost because we think they're in a cloud or because we think they're they're fine in our, in our phones. But I mean, losing photos, it's heartbreaking. I've seen stories that, oh, I thought the external hard drive was fine, but we need to make sure, I mean, external hard drives don't last all our lives. So I decided, I made an admission that I wanted to help families preserve their photos. And, and then I, I did one-on-one -on -one sessions helping families with a specific but then last year I made it a priority to do a project to teach a course that will help you to have a workflow, what to do with your photos from the moment you take the photo to preservations. And preserve is printing your photos, telling the stories and yearbooks, 
what's your story what's your visual story from january to december and video for me it's 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 it's, it's i just love video that's why also i offer video in my family sessions and i want to teach people to save their videos how can they compile the whole movie so they can have family uh, day nights watching together so that's why i made it a priority i i love i love what i do taking pictures and, and helping preserve others other people's pictures how do we check out the course what is it's online now right yes so it started uh, this week it's online it's it's a private facebook so it's not only a, a video that you follow but it's also like a coaching a group of coaching because i will be there on a facebook group answering all your questions and the way i did the course is by section it's literally first sections how you can document better and how to select your favorites how to create a photo book and what to do with your clips so it's very specific very i hate wasting time so it's very specific for people that don't have time because i basically the reason we don't select our photos is because we don't want to it's because the time it's on it's not on our hands right yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a time issue like we all want to preserve our memories but I made it a priority to really, really work on what can work for so can people uh, save their time and manage their digital library in with 20 minutes a week. I guess it's a, a perfect time to be offering things online, isn't it? Given that there's a global pandemic. <laughs> exactly. So then I, this project, I started a year ago. And then when all these crazy things happen, it's like, okay, I'm going to sit down on my computer and make this happen. So yes, not all things are bad in 2020. <laughs> No, oh, it's true. We have to adapt, don't we? But I also have one-on-one -on -one sessions online where I have a program that I can I go I go into your computer and I can work your mouse. So I do I have services that I can help people organize their photos, everything from I'm in Mexico and people could be anywhere and I can also help them remotely. That's fantastic. And uh, I'm guessing that it's overwhelmingly, if not entirely, women who are your audience, right? Or your your customers. Yes, I think yeah, I don't want to segment, but of course we moms, the women, that's my client but I really get excited when a dad gets involved. <laughs> oh my god, you're excited! Yes, you are the memory keeper. I call them memory keepers. We are the memory keepers because we are the ones that take the pictures, but we need to make sure we're also in the picture, right? <laughs> exactly. So what is your advice for actually getting the mothers into the photos? Do you have do you have like a, a time where you actually talk to a, part, a husband or a, a, the rest of the family and say? I actually, yes. I think my favorite section it's called meaningful documentation and it's a section where I I make you think how you can tell your story because photos are that story so we just can't just rely on selfies yes selfies are great selfies are fun but we just can't rely on selfies we need to tell the story we need to make sure we're part of this story so I actually I have a lot of tips to really do our meaningful documentation on, on, on this course. I give a lot of tips. I, should, I also have technical tips because right now our cameras are on our phones and we need to know how our phones work so we don't get frustrated with our photos and it's easily access. We have access to, to a camera that can tell a story just by flipping our phones in one second. So it's really the technology that we have in our hands is a blessing like you say for someone who's uh, they are time starved they don't have enough time and maybe they're a little bit nervous about the technology it's great to have you know someone like you who has made it all completely practical step by step and you know it can reassure them as well as well as learning how to tell their story i think it's a real reassurance yes. isn't it to know that everything is safe everything is backed up in five ways or have whatever your recommendation is and also to have prints i mean i have not printed a photo recently i don't print nearly as much i need to i want to yes yes we should make it a habit we should make it a habit and like you said it's practicality it's not as hard as it looks if we just dedicate 10 minutes just separate your favorites so it does you don't have to play catch up like a, for many years if you start now if you know exactly what to do it will save you time yes and i always recommend just start with last year do print your photos don't start like oh okay i'm gonna start now from 20 years ago no just do it from 2019 and then go backwards and then you will realize it's not that hard
Yeah. That's what I always tell people. And, you, and then as soon as you see your first photo book printed, believe me, you will be motivated. You will have the knowledge to go back and tackle the rest. What a wonderful thing that you started developing this a year before we find ourselves all stuck at home. There's no excuses now. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no excuses exactly. No, you're absolutely right. You, have a, you do have what you, I guess you would call a captive audience. The fact that you also speak three languages helps increase your, um, the number of people that you can support. Oh, definitely. I have a lot of Brazilians. I mean, you know, Brazilians are, it's, they're a huge country. They're everywhere. And I have met a lot of people here. And I already have Brazilian clients here that um, appreciate that I, I speak Portuguese. <laughs> it definitely opens doors. So definitely check out Patricia and her online course. You can find her on Instagram and Facebook at Patricia Pulido Photo. I will include this in the episode notes. In addition to hearing about her life and work, I wanted to know a little bit more about what Patricia finds confusing or difficult about English, even after all these years of speaking the language. And last but not least, I asked her to share her top tip, her best piece of advice for all you English learners out there. In English, is there a word or a phrase that, you, that you've always found really confusing? Yes. It took me a while to understand what for good. We are living for good. I mean, couldn't understand even when, it, when they explained it to me. I was like, but it doesn't make sense. For good? Forever? You mean? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it, <laughs> you're leaving, so it's good? <laughs> no, for me, it's really hard. And now that I was recording my classes, I always confuse even if I'm uh, I mean I'm fluent in English since I was five yeah the in and on for me ah. in and on yes I, I can see myself when I say it and then I when I hear myself again oh what <laughs> nearly all of my students are intermediate to advanced and all of them say prepositions prepositions I can't you know I need to focus on oh okay they want to focus on prepositions and then phrasal verbs which of course can include a preposition and it's just because there's there's so many and there, there's no rules there's no rules they don't make sense exactly it's just I think well now that you said that there are no rules it's just like by listening right so exactly. even if there are no rules when I hear myself when I when I record and then I, I go back it's like oh what did I say in it's on it's like when I when I listen to it it makes more sense when then I was just like writing it or or just saying it what would be like your top tip for someone who's looking who's seriously looking to improve their English watch tv watch tv Yes. And I did that. I did that when I was very young. I did that with, with my kids when they were learning Portuguese. I did that with my kids when they were, they were learning in English. They were very young, two and four. They would complain. But it's like I said, no, you're watching TV in English. But I don't understand. It was really, really frustrating for them. And I was like, mm -mm. if you're watching TV, you have to. And then, and it's funny because then years later, it's like, oh, mom, TV is in Spanish. And they, they by themselves, they switch it to English. Uh, they might as well learn in English while they're just sitting down. <laughs> doing nothing. That's great. And so I guess there was no subtitles because they'd be two and four. So they weren't reading subtitles. Exactly. Yeah, no subtitles. But then th the same, I would, when I was doing, when I was learning Portuguese, I would make myself like uh, watch uh, movies in Portuguese with subtitles so I can follow along. But yeah. I think, I think I, I really like to give that advice because I really think that helped us, so my kids just watch TV. I mean, just. It's great. And it's certainly something we can all do right now, isn't it? In our free time. Exactly. Totally. So that's all for today. I hope you found this conversation useful, interesting, and even inspiring maybe in terms of improving your language skills and for getting serious about preserving your family memories. Be sure to follow and subscribe to this podcast and follow me and hashtag English with Amy on Instagram for nearly daily English tips. Until next time.